Wake up! Wake up! I'm awake. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I uh, I had to take my glasses off because they're pissing me off. Okay. I have this blue light filter in them, and I'm obviously staring at the computer screen, which is firing a load of blue light through. And it's just firing it back at the camera. It literally just sends it back. It's amazing, like, <laughs> but it's really annoying when I'm looking at myself on the screen through my own glasses. So I'm taking them off. Just take them off and, and be blind. By the way, I still haven't found my glasses. From Oh, yeah. Yeah. So these are like glasses from two years ago that are a little bit different to my new prescription. But yeah, I need to get rid of the blue light, I think, in the in the... When I go back, when I go back out and get the upgrade, I went on. Uh, it was a couple of months ago, and I was about five months ago or less. I don't know. Um, I went on a feverish clean a while ago. Um, Graham okay. had just bought. He, Graham's known for his outlandish glasses frames and sunglasses frames, and he'd gotten um, a pair of sunglasses that were very Willy Wonka, Johnny Depp, Willy Wonka <laughs> sunglasses esque. Uh, he was delighted. Does Johnny Depp as Willy Wonka wear glasses? Okay, I don't know what that looks like. Now I have to look it up. Well, you're gonna to need to look that up. Um, but what does like I? I'm trying to visualize Graham now with glasses, and I can't think of an outlandish pair of glasses. You haven't been around Graham in a while. It's been a while, yeah. Yeah, he's he's quite. Um, I'll have a look through. Even just you know, just wamp open Instagram there and have a look through some of his posts, and you'll see his sunglasses and stuff. And Juliet okay. is just as fun framey. Oh, like as these goggle things. Which ones are you looking at? Johnny Depp goggles. Yeah, those kind of things. Well, not not quite like them, but kind of, yeah. And um, so he got sunglasses like that, and he also got a six month um, contact lens prescription. And yeah. I went on a feverish clean. Now, first of all, he has shown me the sunglasses, and I was like, they're fucking hideous. <laughs> and they were still are these the are bag. on Instagram already no not these ones he, he, he okay. had never actually worn them um, and I went on a feverish clean and put everything away and the glasses nor the, the uh, six month prescription for contact lenses has been seen since oh god and he's convinced I threw them away because I didn't like them so and where did you throw them away to I have no idea I remember you didn't deny it though I remember having the bag with the with the glasses and, prescri- and thing, the contact lenses in them, and going. I'm going to put these in here. There, it's going okay. to be away, but sure, we go here all the time. And I have a vague memory of doing that. So thinking it's away, but sure, we're obviously going to come back to this place wherever I put them. And do you think I can remember where that is? I have ripped this house <laughs> apart. <laughs> in like apology and trying to make up for the fact that I put them away in the first place to try and find them. I cannot locate those. And now I'm like in my cleaning, did I throw them out? You're not like, yeah. Oh, it's, it's You're just, just a yeah. shit husband basically. Pretty much. Yeah. I probably threw them away in spite. Let's be honest. Yeah. They're uh, probably in like a, a shorts pocket somewhere. <laughs> Probably. I probably just Hidden put them in, in press. Like, a jacket pocket and just like, ah, sure, of course, we'll find them. Um, okay, talking about that, I f- like I redid my room recently because we're getting ready for the baby. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had to kind of rejig my wardrobe around and I found a jacket that I haven't worn in a long time. And there's loads of money in the pockets. Happy days. I love when that happens. And it happens so often. <laughs> I don't use like physical money anymore, really. So that never happens. Yeah, uh, see, so when like, you're on the find, dole, like, you have to use physical money. Does not go into your account? No, you have to go and collect it every week. I thought it goes into it. Does not go into it. used to do electronic fund transfer. No. no um, well, if you can, I can't do it for some reason. Um, but yeah, like you have to go and collect it every I think the whole idea is that, you know, you go and collect it. So you, like you show that you're not actually working. Yeah. Now, 20 ish um, years ago was the last time I was not 20 years ago, 15 years ago or so I was in a similar situation and I had to go and sign on. I've been working all the time. I'm a tiger. Um, Mm. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm, I am so (laughs) tough. Um, I had to go and sign on every week, every Thursday, but no, every Monday, but 
that was just signing on. That was just like going in and signing my name with my yeah. little cardy thing. Um, but the money went into my account every Thursday. That's interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't have to. I think I have to sign on like every month or two months, maybe. I'm not sure. Mm. Okay. But anyway, yeah. So it's nice to find extra money when you have ADHD pockets. That's fair. Happy days. Was it uh, any kind of substantial amount that you can use nah. to buy nice new equipment? Or is it like a fiver? I probably lost it in time since. It's gone. Yeah. It's in a different pocket now. I'll find it in six months. <laughs> I'll put that there. That'll keep it nice and safe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how have right, things so been? What have you been up to? What's what's the what story? What have you been what's, up to? What's wrong with Harv? Just, well, yeah, I, got, I could always find something. But uh, I'm not going to today. I'm I'm good. I'm feeling decent. What's right I, with Harv? What's right with Harv? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Rachel's inside with the girls, um, having a little mini baby shower. Um, nice, because she's like literally ready to pop. So she's due in like what date is it now? The twenty third. She's due in like a week ish. Um, but we're expecting maybe she'll need to be induced. This baby's measuring a bit big. Okay. Um, so we'll see how it goes over the next week. But we're trying to kind of get the room ready. Get stuff sorted you know all that kind of stuff it's it's a bit of a a bit of a uh what's the word i'm looking for not rampage busy, busy. let's say busy busy it's, it's busy, busy, busy busy trying to get bits done yeah so yeah understandable um, yeah nothing much else going on talking to a few, few recruiters which is nice and course is going really well oh i got my placement so in the masters we have to do a 12-week placement so I okay. got my supervisor for that. Um, and yeah, it seems like it could be a good, interesting project. Be what are you some... doing that in? Where, what's, the, what's the placement going to be? So I don't have a whole lot of details on it. I just kind of have the high level of what the particular project is. And okay. to be honest, he kind of, he, he gave me this project um based on kind of interests that I sent to him, but there's other projects. So I might have a look at the other ones and see, you know, if there's something a little bit more interesting or suitable, but this one seems interesting enough. It's essentially, I think it's, it's to kind of pull data from a company. So it's working with a company. I'm not sure what the company is or what they specialize or do. Um, so pulling their data on a daily basis and using Node.js and, uh, react to build some sort of uh analytics platform um okay to analyze it on a daily basis and uh you know put together charts and dashboards and stuff like that so For could visual, be, could visualization be visualization exactly yeah so nice uh i just had my first meeting with him earlier in the week so uh get a bit more info and see how it goes but yeah it's nice to know because it was kind of up in the air so we'll yeah. see we'll see how it goes cool that sounds yeah no but that's actually just like very niche interesting you know like yeah you'd have to have an interest in something like that to find it interesting but you know it does sound, sounds pretty cool uh it sounds like it's the kind of thing that you'll be primed for um yeah. in terms of medication and all that kind of drama and high blood pressure and stuff like that what's going on there Funny, I've actually asked you about that in a while. Yeah, and funny you bring it up because I was going to say we should talk about it. Um, because I wanted to get, I wanted to get your reaction, okay, to how you feel things are going from your perspective, looking at me and looking towards this direction, if you know what I mean. So, how it is working with you, how how you've progressed, all that kind of jazz. Yeah. So obviously we've talked about it in the past. It was yeah. It was good when I was on the medication, obviously scatterbrain still there and things were um, kind of going well and then came off the medication and you, basically I just dove off a cliff yeah. <laughs> and Very it was exciting. a nightmare, uh, especially at the very start. But like that's what now? That's two months. That's it. Yeah, probably. it's good two months away now. Yeah. So uh, yeah, what's, what's the, what's the take now? You've, you've kind of leveled out a bit, I think. Um, there's still 
a lot of a few of the particles are still flowing around in particles. the air. Yeah, <laughs> a few of your harv particles are still like your harvicles are harvicles, still. Kind I of love it. <laughs> flying around the place that don't seem to have a sounds uh, infectious. Definite, it really does. <laughs> it's, it's a bit STI-ish. Um, Jesus, okay. <laughs> they're yeah, they're still kind of flown around without any kind of purpose or direction. But you seem to have pulled things together a bit more. Um, it's easier to keep you on topic, mm. but it's still, that by no means says that it's easy to do it. It's easier. Yeah. It's yeah, still, yeah. Like getting you to focus is still like fucking trying to herd fucking, I'm not even going to say cats. I'm going to say fucking flamingos. Flamingos, although they're traditionally a herding creature, so are they? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was like, I'm sure they're difficult to herd. No, it's like trying to herd, trying to trying to herd harves. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, traditionally isolated, uh, isolatory creature. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's your you're easier yeah. to pin down to a specific discussion, but you're I still feel like all over the place. Yeah, I feel like probably it's not as bad as it seems. That I just like play up on it to piss you off as well. You know what I mean? I know how, uh, how it annoys you. So I fucking play on it. Yeah. Um, There's definitely an aspect of you yeah. taking the piss out of me sometimes. Yeah. Uh, so that's interesting. Yeah. So I definitely feel like, um, oh yeah, yeah. Leveling out is a nice way to put it. So at the start, it was like, I just became a completely different person. You know, I wasn't yeah. myself anymore. I went back to how I visualized myself before the meds and before the diagnosis as this kind of just lump of mashed potato who couldn't really, you know, function properly. And that's what it was like at the very start. And then kind of slowly, like you say, it started to level out. And I, it's still very difficult, to, like in terms of productivity and stuff and distraction, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like for things like preparing for interviews or um you know sitting down for periods of time to do productive work or anything like that it's still very difficult and just the day-to-day -day stuff like you know i think we've probably talked about it in the past but those invisible obstacles are back you know yeah i don't kind of proactively tidy up around the house as much as i did when i was on the medication it's easier for me to see something on the floor and leave it there rather than pick it up, which I would have done straight away without even a second thought when I was on yeah. the medication, those kind of things. Um, but I'm very much more relaxed as well now. You know, I was agitated quite a lot at the start. I'm probably pissed off an awful lot as well because of the You were the change. very dejected at the start. You were like, yeah, it, there was it a hit definite me hard. sense of defeat. Yeah. It hit me really hard, especially because of the time, because it came at the worst possible time. Yeah. I had so many assignments some of which I was halfway through and was doing a really good job at. I had a really good kind of tight bake down schedule to get my assignments done and prepare myself for the exams over like the course of maybe three, four week period. Um, and then that just kind of went completely out the window. Sorry, I have to interrupt just for two seconds. Okay. I have another screen open at the same time. <laughs> and Graham's just after messaging me. <laughs> he sent me a screenshot. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's saying, uh, what the fuck? It's a request on Instagram from you for, uh, to request to follow him. <laughs> he's yeah. like, uh, this prick doesn't follow me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't use Instagram. I literally, so you're, you're about to I end. think I was going to say this to you. So like, I don't follow Steven. Uh, I don't follow pretty much like 90% of the people who I know on Instagram. <laughs> I don't follow back. Um, you're just a dickhead. I don't use it. Like I, I used it briefly when I was kind of trying to get into photography and stuff, but then I kind of just stopped bothering and I don't even open it anymore. When we started this, I used it a bit, you know, I was like, yeah, like, well, let me see. I've got like 15th of March, uh, 13th of March, and then literally all of the the other things are uh, like ADH Derpcast reposts. Yeah. And then from that, it's like my anniversary, which was like nearly a year ago. So 
I don't well, use it, so tell Graham to fuck off. <laughs> now you're on his <laughs> list. So <laughs> that's what, if I haven't been on it already, then that's a surprise. Uh, yeah, you've just gotten underlined. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, the uh, yeah. No, I definitely think it's uh, things are a bit more calm. So on the blood pressure side, I went back to my doctor. We got an, another uh, another twenty four hour monitor, and my BP had dropped, uh, but not enough for him to be yeah. comfortable with me going back on the meds. So he did say to me, look, if you really need to go back on them, we can look at doing blood pressure medication and then, you know, I'd be happy to put you back on the, on the Ritalin, but I really didn't want to do that. Um, so sent a referral back off to my psychiatrist so we could have a consultation with her. So I'm meeting with her in July at some point. Oh, okay. I also went out and bought a home BP monitor. So I've been checking it kind of constantly, you know, maybe once a day or two, three times a day. Some days I've forgotten. Yeah, I haven't really been tracking it, but it's got a memory in it. Um, mm-hmm. And it's def- it, at the very start, it was fluctuating up and down. Um, and now it's kind of on a good trajectory, mostly downwards, which what, is nice. What's the kind of typical reading you're getting at the minute? So at the start, it was kind of high, high 140s. 150 odd okay, over that's fairly high 90 over somethings okay and it kind of has been slowly reducing and okay. i think the one i took this morning was like 120 121 122 over 80 something that's high 80s i think 120 over 80 is is or in the 80s is perfect that's so that's normal blood pressure on the monitor, it's uh, so it's got like four sections. So it's like yeah, green, yellow, orange, red, and most of mine were in orange. You know, like I had some in red, and yeah. I haven't had any in green yet. But today, and a few of the more recent ones have been in the yellow. So it's good okay. progress. Yeah, that's very good progress. Because going from like tipping into the fifty or one hundred and fifties and getting it down to one hundred twenty, that's fantastic. I'm in, yeah. I don't know what they mean. I just know what, what high and low means. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that's really good. Yeah. So uh, and do you think I, yeah, when you ahead. talk to your psychiatrist, are you going to request alternatives or are you going to say, here's where it's at. Give me my Ritalin, please. Or are yeah, you going see, to try and stay on not Ritalin? This is the thing because like I, I experimented with two or three different stimulants. Okay. Mm-hmm. And Ritalin was the last one I experimented with. And it, it actually had such a great effect, a profound effect. Yeah. That it made it changed my life. So I don't know whether I believe something else can have that effect, if you know what I mean. Yeah. It, I feel like I found the right thing quite early. So but that's a blocker you're putting up yourself. Yeah, because 100%. you found something that work that work. 100%, you're like, yeah. you're naturally resistant then to to trying an alternative. Yeah, but, like I just at this stage, I just want to get back to the way I was. Yeah, because I miss feeling like a full human. Um, but that's like you say, that's something that I'm doing myself. And if there was the suggestion or the option there to try something else, I think now is the perfect time because I'm not taking the Ritalin, so I'm coming at it from the baseline. Yeah, rather than not having it, any medication. Excuse me. Rather than yeah, exactly. Rather than being on something and feeling a sense of loss because you're losing. That but also, it could be like a, a different sensation or a different effect. You know, like I could be yeah. if I if I was to come off Ritalin to go straight on to something else or to whatever it is. I don't know what the other options are at the moment, really. But you know, I could be looking for that exact same feeling or that same exact same yeah. effect which may not necessarily come but it may be a positive effect in a different manner yeah that could be even better but i just you know disregard it because it's not what i wanted or what i expected you know that yeah. kind of way whereas coming at it from uh, uh the kind of completely unmedicated baseline foundation i think it's probably a, a good reason or a good time to do it yeah and it, it allows you to be open to however alternatives will will make you feel but um the fact that your blood pressure came down 
is really good. And like for a while there, you're going through some really stressful stuff. So that's the I, thing. I think it was the stress that was pushing it up because I never suffered from high blood pressure before. And I've, you know, I fluctuated in weight for my yeah. whole adult life, pretty much. I'm, I'm, you've not exactly been eating salads for the last while either. So no. like that would, that would, that was a big factor as well. So, um, and I think the fact that you've been addressing those things at the same time. I try it to address, I try it to do the exercise thing and the food thing. And I have definitely yeah. been less bad. Yeah. Like I, a good few times I got out with the dog for walks. I'm trying to, you know, do more walking throughout the day. Um, and I'm trying to eat less crap. Yeah. You've been but, better than you were when you came off it. Yeah. hundred percent. Like I yeah. used food and coffee, especially as a crutch and I've cut yeah. down that, you know, hugely. Now the last little while I've kind of started drinking a little bit more coffee, which is interesting because the BP is going down, but the caffeine intake has gone up slightly. Um, yeah. so that's an interesting one, but because the other say, factors have also gone down. Yeah. So I think, I think the main thing was the stress because that's pretty much the only thing that has changed. Yeah. I have no stress from college. I have no stress from holidays. I have no stress from any of those things that were kind of, you know, going all over the place. Yeah. Things are relaxed. Obviously I have a baby about to pop out, but I'm not stressed about that. Um, sure. you know, I'm you excited more than it's grand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, I need to, I definitely, I, I, once the baby comes, I say once the baby comes, I, I want to start getting back into the gym. We've talked about this for the last two, yeah. three, four, five months, you know, but I think I've, I've now determined that the lunchtime is the slot to use. So yeah. lunchtime slot for the gym. I want to get back in, start lifting again. And I think that's going to be a huge, a huge factor in it, you know, getting yeah. back into proper vigorous exercise rather than just strolling around. That but was yeah. the most positive you had ever been when you were doing that. So yeah. Um, let's, let's see how it goes when you have your consultation. Do you know when in July it is? Is it early, mid, late? I have the date, but I don't know. I need to okay. double check it. Well, it'll be a surprise for me as it is for you. Yeah. It'll be um, a surprise when it pops up on my phone in the morning. It's like, fuck, I have to go to that day. <laughs> is it in person? Um, consultation? Yeah. The office is just around the corner. So it's grand. Ah, oh, sure, that's fine then. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Let's see how, how that goes. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure judging from the very limited knowledge I have and judging from the way you've been tracking, it sounds like it's going to be a, a better one. Hooray. Yeah. Happy yeah. days. Sing a song. Sing a song. <laughs> <laughs> so what about you then? Are you fully off your, I want to say Lexipro? Lexapro, yeah. I haven't taken Lexapro in a while. Yeah. Um there's definitely been an adjustment period. Um there's been managing my emotions has become something I have to consciously be aware of. Um in I'm what way? Um I find that when I'm just on Ritalin, it's almost like the Lexapro is tempering the mood affecting parts of Ritalin um, and when I'm just on Ritalin that's a bit more magnified so I have okay. to be a bit more aware of the potential mood swings and mitigate it and kind of breathe a bit more basically and bring myself back down I'm finding I can I'm back to when I was quite quick to anger and quite quick to being very reactionary yeah. Um, like not in any kind of like I'm not exactly like smashing glasses off a wall or anything yeah. like that, but I'm this is bullshit kind of fast. Um but it's like it's okay, it's manageable, it's fine. It's not like it's not like that's in any way debilitating. I just have to be aware <laughs> of how I'm feeling, you know. Um, yeah. and when I react to something, I have to kind of try and make myself take a step back and go am I reacting to this or am I reacting to this? You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And is it just triggering like a sense of injustice? Um, which I am quite hyper aware of at the minute. 
um, because of how I'm reacting to things. And I'm trying to see if my reactions to things are legitimate or if I'm just reacting, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so all in all, uh, like but that, the thing is I was on Lexapro to manage anxiety um, and none of the discussions of coming off it have been around anxiety. Like that hasn't <laughs> peaked or there hasn't been any, um, haven't been any anxiety peaks or any uh, stressors around that side of things at all. Um, yeah. So I think Ritalin is managing the <clears throat> that side of it really well. Um, yeah. I'm I haven't had any any panic attacks or anything like that or any kind of anxiety attacks uh, coming off Lexapro, which has been pretty sweet because they weren't great. I didn't have panic attacks per se. I would have. It was more like big anxiety attacks. Um, like I wouldn't have had the like the like heightened uh, heart rate. Can't really do anything. It was more slow burner than that. Like I'd talk myself out of situations. Like if I knew I had a big drive coming up, mm. I'd make excuses and try and create a situation where I wouldn't have to do the drive. Yeah, yeah or yeah. like. And it would just be constantly in my head all the time. So less panic attacky, more con- uh, more constant. Um, and I haven't had any of that. That has been quite nice. And I'm more able to not get in my head. So like, uh, I used to be very procrastinating. Like, let's say, like me and Graham were just on holiday. And the big thing for me was always like going into new places. And I'd always talk myself out of being the first person to go into a new place or... Mm find reasons to not go and stuff like that. Whereas now I'm very much, Ooh, let's go here. I'm just walking in, you know, and that, I was exactly the same. Out. I was exactly the same with that. Um, yeah. Like when we were in Rome for our honeymoon and stuff, usually I'd be like the one who wants to stay in the hotel, you know, yeah. maybe just go to the restaurant in the hotel because I'm, you know, have this kind of subconscious fear <laughs> of, of strange places. But in Rome, we walked all over the place. We didn't, you know, we had no bones about going anywhere. But you, you mentioned the um, the not being in your head. Like, that's the one bit that I miss most about, yeah. I think, the Ritalin. Because I'm always in my head now. Like, you have no space. Yeah. I I see it in you when, when we're talking about things, even when we're talking about simple things like editing and stuff like that. Mm. You, It's like you find it hard to let the little things go. It's like you're almost obsessing on small details or like constantly on, you know, whereas I'm yeah. like, oh, let's do this, throw it up, done. You're like, no, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, and this is wrong, you know, like, whereas yeah, those that things... perfectionism has come back because the yeah. little voice inside my head has come back, yeah. Yeah, uh, you can, that's, that's probably been the, for what we're doing, that's been one of the big challenges, trying to get yeah. you past that not everything needs to be perfect. You know what I mean? And it's funny because um, I had, I've had this conversation with a few different people, you know, friends who was starting a business and a friend who was, I um, can't remember what they were doing, but it was a similar thing. And I had, having gone through this process for the podcast, you know, where we realized let's get it 80% of the way and then it's fine to put out. And yeah. I had this co- conversation with these people and gave them that advice from the experience. But now, obviously, it's ricocheted back onto me um, yeah. with the ch- change in circumstances. But let's see how you get on, Dr. Wise. See if that... Um, what's wrong with Harv? What's wrong with Harv? Let's see what... <laughs> yeah, in the next issue of What's Wrong with Harv, things will be right with Harv, hopefully. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that's where things are. Um, nice. I think we're we're good for now. I think I, what I'm going to do is end this because I have to go and look after my child. My child is yeah. not well at the moment. Um, we don't know what it is. We got a letter from her childcare that said that there was a case of COVID in the center. Mm-hmm. Um, and that unless we needed to go for like hospital or doctor care, if she gets in any way unwell, just assume it is COVID. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and she uh, last night there it was like her breathing was a bit labored um and she woke up and she's basically a snot bag at the moment <laughs> and it's like her throat is sore like she she doesn't really want to eat anything 
that's like hard. She she's more like give me soft cold things. So mm-hmm. um we're just assuming it's COVID. And that's why this is remote as well, because my child is a bag of virus. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we had and we've had to be uh, in person today. We've had what scarlet fever. We thought we had scarlet fever in the house. Um yep. so I was supposed to do my meals on wheels deliveries yesterday. And we were taking one of the girls down to the uh, the emergency doctor to see because they had a, a case of scarlet fever in the school, so we yeah. took her down to the doctor. But because I deliver to kind of elderly people and people who are kind of you know more at risk, I had to say no, you can't do yeah. it. So yeah, um, you can't introduce something like that to our most vulnerable people. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's why we're we're there. So. I am going to wrap this up today because I have to go and look after my um, my virus bag. <sighs> and uh, I've been Stephen. You've been Harv. Thanks for watching. And remember to like, subscribe, comment, and all the other jizzy jazzles. Bye. Bye.